calls for pill testing or drug checking at music festivals have escalated again this summer. But there's also been a lot of misinformation out there about what pill testing involves. Without advocating for one side or the other, we thought we'd examine exactly what happens inside the tent when someone wants to get their drugs checked. What does the process involve? Supporters of pill testing say it lowers harms associated with drug use and can help change someone's behaviour. But others argue the tests encourage illegal drug use or can't detect new synthetic drugs. Pill testing gives people a false sense of security. Pill testing doesn't deal with overdoses. Pill testing doesn't deal with the fact that what is safe for one person isn't safe for another person. Australia has so far seen one pill testing trial at the Canberra Groove in the Move Festival in 2018. Hey, we're pill testing today. Australia's trial used the same model found at European festivals, including in the UK and Austria. In fact, drug checking has been used in Europe since the early 1990s in various forms, mostly off-site and in some countries at festivals and night spots. The Netherlands started in 1992 and several other European countries have since seen checking services. Testing also now exists in New Zealand and parts of the Americas. In Australia, DIY testing kits have been available for years, but these tests can't confirm dose levels and won't pick up whether the drugs are laced with other potentially lethal substances. When done professionally, like at Groove and the Moo, a team of specialists use sophisticated spectrometer tests to find out what's in someone's drugs. So let's go through the stages of the kind of pill testing being called for at festivals in Australia. The testing tent would usually be set up in the medical area at a festival. On entering, you'll be met by a harm reduction worker and will be asked to lock away your phone in a safe as there's no photos or video allowed inside. There's also a certain eligibility criteria that you'll have to meet before you are able to test your drugs. Among them are a refusal if you're carrying large amounts of a drug and you'll have to sign a waiver before testing is possible. The waiver clearly states the testing won't show evidence a drug is safe to consume, and it won't provide information about how your body will respond to the drug being tested that day. The first thing we say, contrary to what many people suggest, the first thing we say is that if you want to stay safe today from any harms associated with drug consumption, you shouldn't use any drugs today. From here, you're given a unique number on a wristband which stays with you through the next steps and is linked to your drug sample test. You're also asked a few questions, like what kind of drug do you think you have? And is it the first time you've ever used illegal drugs? In Australia, eight and a half million people aged 14 or over reported using an illicit drug at some point in their life. And 19% of people aged 20 to 29 said they tried ecstasy. After those questions, it's then time for the actual test. In Australia's trial, it was conducted by postdoctoral chemists licensed to handle illicit drugs. The drug is then placed on a platform and is photographed, weighed and measured. The chemists also have a chance to chat with you about how drugs are manufactured and a sample of the drug is taken for testing. The more provided, the better it can tell what's inside. The machine used is called a Fourier Transform Infrared Spectrophotometer. What happens is that the patron would provide our qualified chemist with a product, which they will place on this platform here. If you look closely, you'll see that there's a diamond at the base of the platform, and a laser is fired into the product, and that laser is scattered, it's reflected by the product, according to what's contained therein. That scattering is recorded as a fingerprint. And that fingerprint shows up here. Every compound has a fingerprint according to the nature of the bonds of the various chemicals contained therein. And what the computer program is very good at doing is very rapidly comparing quite a difficult fingerprint to its library of nearly 30,000 different compounds. Once the result is found, the chemist labels the sample with one of three classifications. A white answer means the sample is pretty much what you expected. 
You could also be given a yellow classification, which means the sample is different to what you expected. Or you could return a red category, which means the sample is known to be associated with increased harm, multiple overdoses, or even death. Even in this very small trial that we conducted in Canberra, we identified two products that we thought were worthy of a red. One was N-ethylpentalone, which is a rather unpleasant cathinone, and we fully anticipate seeing more of that this year. And the other was a product that the machine was not sure about. And you do not want to be the person who consumes a new drug first. From here, a medical officer talks you through the test results and risks of consuming the substances identified, including those given a white classification. And you're directed to a drug and alcohol counsellor who provides information on ways to reduce your risk. Before leaving the tent, there's an amnesty bin nearby where you can throw away any drugs you choose. In all, the process takes about 10 to 20 minutes. Despite its sophistication, some toxicologists say the setups used at festivals do have their limitations. Australia's largest workplace drug testing lab takes 24 hours to return accurate results. There's some real issues here with how accurate and reliable the technology is that we can deploy quickly and, and rapidly in a tent. In 2016, the Global Drug Survey said it was the worst time in a generation to start taking MDMA, partly because of the dangerous levels of purity in today's drugs compared with pills in the 90s, which were generally about five times weaker. Organisers of the trial at Groove and the Moo say drug checking would cost about $34,000 for each festival. 